Hi everyone, welcome to Understand Heart, where we learn about anything and everything heart related. Today, I will be sharing my experience of applying for medical ST3 and some tips on the application process. I understand that with the changes in IMT, application may change, but I suspect the application criteria will likely stay the same. These are the timestamps of the topics I'm covering, so let's get started. Let me start with the different scoring criteria within the application. Firstly, undergraduate degree is scored based on achievements during your undergraduate years. Therefore, if you are a junior doctor now, there will be very little you can do to score in this section if you haven't done so already. The second scoring component is postgraduate certification. This is mainly aimed towards clinicians that are more research-minded or academic trainees that have achieved a postgraduate degree prior to ST3 application. Most candidates who apply straight after medical training would not score on this, but there are other part-time diplomas which you can consider if you are applying for a competitive specialty and want to maximize points. One other way of looking at this component would be more similar to what I have done. If you don't succeed in applying the first year, aim to pursue an additional degree to increase your chances on the next application. The third component is additional achievements. There are several ways to gain points in this category. Keep a lookout for online competitions, for example, national essay prizes or case report writing competitions, as these will score you points. The British Junior Cardiologist Association do hold several competitions every year, so keep an eye out for those and send your entries in. MRCP is the next step. Although this is necessary to complete medical training, the timing of passing the exams is very important. Try to attempt the exams as early as possible, as the applications are normally in February time, and you can score the maximum if you pass your exams by that time. Note that the PACES exam carries double the weight compared to part 2, so if you have to choose between the two, get your PACES first. There are plenty of opportunities for presentations nowadays, but you will need to get advice from your local consultants and registrars. Local and regional presentations should not be a problem. If you get yourself involved in a project, you should have the chance to present this either locally or at national conferences. In a similar way, speaking to the right seniors will definitely help you get some publications underway. As I mentioned on my previous video, finding out who are the consultants that publishes frequently in your hospital and approaching them would be a good start to get yourself involved. Obviously, you will need to show your enthusiasm and do your part in order to get your name on that paper. Teaching is another important aspect of being a doctor and also scoring points in the application. Get involved in teaching early and inform the consultants in charge of what you want to do and hope to get out from it. This will make sure that you get the proper certificates and forms to formalise it. Training and teaching is also another way of earning extra points. I would suggest if you are still early on in your career, pursue a teaching degree which you can do part-time in order to get a postgraduate certificate or even a master's. An easy way to get some points would be to join in teaching courses. There are plenty of them around on the internet which anyone can join in. Quality improvement is another vital part of being a doctor. Try to get involved early, especially if you are going to be in the same hospital for a while as this will ensure that you will be able to complete the cycle and present the findings. Rather than aiming to change the whole hospital system, do something simple. My first quality improvement project was on hyponatremia and it not only helped me learn about hyponatremia, I also presented it in a local meeting and got some of my colleagues excited about it. Lastly, the leadership and management category may be a difficult one for some. Some are more active in leadership roles and these points will come naturally. For others, I would suggest taking up something small locally, maybe join the trainee committee or help out with organising of the rota. But remember, the commitment has to be at least 6 months and you will need to demonstrate a positive impact which can be as far as your imagination takes you. Now that I've gone through the scoring system, let me share my experience of applying. 
My first application was in 2016 whilst I was still a CMT2. At that time, I scored zero for undergraduate, postgraduate, additional achievements, publications, and there was no teaching in training and leadership and management section. I only passed part two prior to the application, so scored a four in MRCP, had a national oral presentation at six points, and seven with teaching experience and a 10 with QIP. The total score of 27 was pretty low, so I did not even get through shortlisting into cardiology. I then took up a teaching fellow post and moved on to a research post, so I did not apply in 2017 and 2018. 2019 was my second application attempt. This time, as I was quite productive during my research fellow years, I had increased my points to 54, with extra points from additional achievements, publications, MRCP, training and teaching, and leadership. I managed to get to the interviews this time and did well, with an overall ranking of 10. However, due to being on a tier 2 visa and the resident market labour test, I was not offered the post. I continued to work in the research fellow post and again applied this year with further increase in my score to 59 and was finally offered a national training number this year. I just wanted to share this as I am aware that there are many others like me who have no idea of the direction to go or even how to improve their CV. By understanding the application process and see which areas you are weak in and have a targeted approach towards improving your CV, you will improve your chances of getting into your dream specialty. If you find this video useful, please like and share. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you learned something from the video and would like to support my work. Enable notifications if you want to be informed when I post my next video and comment below if there are any topics that you would like me to cover. If you'd like to get in touch, email me or DM me on my social media platform. Thank you for watching.